Hey, what's going on you guys? It's Dimitri. So, uh, today I have a really, really interesting device to show you. Uh, I just recently got this device working. I realized that I had been doing it all wrong the entire time. So, without further ado, as Philip Franco says, let's just jump into it. So today we're actually going to be looking at a, something that looks like a siren driver. It has to do with sirens. However, it is not a siren driver. Also, I don't know if you can tell, but I've got a second angle going here on my cell phone for some close-up and macro shots uh, of the uh, PCB, the circuit board, as well as like the different components. So, the setup we have here today, the device we're talking about, is an ELK ELK-941 alarm output separator or discriminator, depending on how you uh, look at it. But what this device essentially does, what its intended purpose is, is to take a, an alarm output from your control panel, so your uh, alarm or bell output, as one might say, and essentially what it's going to do is, is it's going to determine what type of alarm it is, what type of alarm your panel is in, based on whatever signal it's receiving. So if it's receiving a steady signal from the alarm output, then it will activate your siren or siren driver in steady. However, if it is a pulsating signal, it will pulse your siren or your siren driver in code 3. Now, one might ask, well, what's the significance of that? The panel already does that. What's the point of having this circuit board in between your panel and your uh, siren or your bell? The reason being is because uh, you can always hook up a siren or a siren driver using standard connections. So, Take this uh, Moose MPI-11 siren driver, for example, if I can get that in the shot. The Moose MPI-11 has a negative or common input, as well as a positive for Yelp and a positive for Steady. So it's a two-channel siren driver, as are most sirens. You've got your Warble or Yelp, and then your Steady. But whenever you hook up, you can only hook up one or the other. You can't use them interchangeably. Therefore, your siren can only make one type of sound. Uh, say, for instance, I had steady, or excuse me, say, for instance, I had Yelp hooked up to my uh, panel, and the negative, even if there was a fire alarm, it would pulse, the sound coming out of my siren would be a pulsed Yelp. And to some people, including me, that just doesn't cut it. I like to have a pulsing steady sound. But if I hook up the steady and the negative, and there's a regular alarm, I only get one long continuous tone. And I also don't want that. What if there was a way where I could have a different type of sound for a different type of alarm? And that's where this device comes in, the ELK 941 Alarm Output Separator. So now I'm going to go in a little bit more detail, show you a little bit of some excerpts from the manual, as well as some up-close shots of the device itself. And then we get to see it in action. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's look at the circuit board in a little bit more detail. So to the untrained eye, or to the average alarm technician, <laughs> such as myself, this literally looks like a standard siren driver. It's got elk products on top, it's got, you know, alarm, blah, blah, blah. However, you'll notice here we've got two separate relays. You've got a relay, relay one, and relay two. So here we've got our positive 12 volts coming from our panel. And we've got our ground, our common ground, and then there's our trigger. Our trigger is basically our alarm output. So what that does is, is any time that there is a type of alarm, any time your panel goes into alarm, it's basically going to, that's the output that you're going to get. So that's going to your alarm or your bell output on your panel. However, this device also requires auxiliary power from your key bus or your keypad bus. And the reason for that is, is it has a logic processing circuit. It's got a chip here. And if I can read the chip properly, it's a 1, 2, C508 slash P, and that's a standard microcontroller. So this microcontroller here, if I'm using that properly, uh, this microcontroller here is essentially the brains of this unit. So you've got your, uh, so you've got your relays here. So notice we've got our 12, uh, our auxiliary 12 volt output from our panel is also bridged to the normally open terminal on relay one. That in turn is jumped with a jumper again to relay two, the normally open terminal on relay two. Relay one is going to be our warble, yelp, or burglary output. So whenever there's a burglary, uh, that would be our burglary sound. That's what's going to trigger the burglary sound. So we've got the common coming out with a red wire that goes to the warble or yelp input on our siren or siren driver. So relay two is our pulsing fire output. So this is going to go to the steady channel on our siren driver or our siren. So that has the yellow wire coming out of common that's going to the steady channel on our siren or siren driver. 
Now, you'll notice each relay has its own red LED that triggers whenever each one is an alarm. So, what that means is, is whenever this logic processing circuit is essentially monitoring the trigger terminal. So, it's got its own power, but it needs the power from the auxiliary output terminals of your panel to A, power its logic circuit, and B, it also has to use that auxiliary power to power your siren or your siren driver, which in my case is a very bad thing because I have an Ademco Vista 20P, and the maximum power output on Vista panels is 2 amps on your... um siren output. So the siren output's maxed out. However, for the key bus, it's 600 milliamps. So you're really, really limited on your key bus and accessories. We're talking milliamps here. So basically all you would have to do in order to circumvent this, because your panel is already limited on power, um, it's highly doubtful that your panel is going to be able to push a siren driver, such as the Moose MPI-11, on its key bus, which is already overloaded, you know, theoretically speaking, you're going to have keypads on there, you're going to have motion detectors, glass brake detectors, uh, auto dialers, um, alarm uh, integration modules, total connect modules, all of that's going to be powered by the auxiliary terminals. So to add a siren output, um, to add the load of a siren or a siren driver to those terminals is going to crash your panel. And the reason I was having such a hard time with this and the reason I just figured out the issue, I tried to install this in my panel two years ago in the Vista 20P with the Moose MPI-11 siren driver. And uh, it would go into alarm for like half a second and uh, basically just the whole, it would, it would power cycle the panel constantly. You would get one or two seconds of siren and then it would just crash. I mean, it, would, it was just pulling way too much power from the panel. So I took this out and I thought it was a fault of the device. It turns out that it was drawing its power for the siren from the auxiliary power terminals instead of the trigger output or the bell output. So essentially, what you're going to have to do if you want to use one of these things, and my personal recommendation, unless you have a really small like system with barely any devices, or if you have a siren such as like the Wave 2 that doesn't pull that much, uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pick up a Honeywell Ademco part number AD12612. It is an auxiliary 12-volt power supply that you would then link your common ground from that power supply, so make a jumper cable from scrap wire, bridge your negative from that power supply to the negative on your panel, and that basically zeroes out a common ground. So that's kind of a tip that I would use, is you're going to, essentially you're going to need an external power supply, specifically tailored for your siren in order to get this to work. And that's the only way that I can figure it out right now. So for demonstrational purposes, I'm using two 6-volt EverReady lantern batteries wired in series to produce a 12-volt circuit. So uh, that's how I'm doing this right now. Uh, in the future, if I were to put this in my system, I would have to give this thing its own power supply because this in particular this little unit right here, this uh, ELK 941, the separator does not draw that much power. However, <laughs> this draws about one and a quarter amps with an eight ohm load. So you're really going to be overloading your panel if you put one of these on in the same line as the key bus. The main reason for this is because alarm panels are not designed for that. You're not supposed to have your siren hooked up to your key bus, otherwise it would be on all the time. They're not designed to operate in that way. So that's why the power is pretty limited there. Uh, the bell output, however, is what carries the majority of the power. But this thing works in a really special way, and I'm going to demonstrate that to you right now. So essentially the way that I'm going to be demonstrating this is I've got this momentary switch here, and I'm going to be pulsing it in the same way a Code 3 is pulsed on a security or a fire panel. I'm going to be doing interrupted presses on the button, which is going to be closing and opening the circuit at different intervals, which is going to essentially trick this little module here, this uh, alarm separator, uh, into thinking that it's a fire alarm signal. And then in turn, it's going to pulse the Wave 2 siren on the steady channel in Code 3, instead of the Warble or the Yelp channel. Let me, for, uh, real quick before I demonstrate this, let me show you what the inside of the Wave 2 looks like to show you how I've got this wired up. It's fairly simple, but I want to go ahead and just show you real quick just to give you an idea. So let me pop this open real quick. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Okay, so let me just open the cover just to give you some context. So we're looking here at the Wave 2. And you can see the configuration. I can point this out with my screwdriver. We've got our negative right there. 
And this is channel number two. And channel number two on the wave two, this terminal right here, is the Yelp or the Warble channel. So I've got that hooked up with a red wire. And that in turn goes back to relay one on the Elk 941. And then the yellow wire is our steady channel. So that's for fire alarms. And that in turn goes back to relay number two on the Elk 941. So, and that kind of lines up with what's on the back of the uh, wave two. If I snap this shut, that was really loud. Uh, let's see, you can see here on the back of the wave two, it's printed out number one or terminal number one is for the steady tone. It's a positive. And then number two, terminal number two is for the warble tone. Also take a look at the lights to notice the kind of processing logic it goes through. And then there's actually gonna be an audible click as soon as it determines what output to, uh, to trigger based on what type of alarm event. So here we go. was painless. Uh, painful, but also painless at the same time. So now, in a similar fashion, we're going to pulse our button presses to simulate a code 3 or a fire alarm. Uh, and you're going to notice that this light is going to light up. However, this is going to do its own independent processing and actually you know, the courtesy of the chip and the relay, and it's actually going to use the other 12 volt line to power the siren. All right, so it's really basic. That's basically how it works. There's not much else to it. It's the same concept if I were to hook it up to a siren driver and an 8 ohm speaker, such as the uh, ATW MS32 or the Moose MPI-8. Or, literally, if you have outdoor speakers, such as the uh, Moose MPI-30, I don't have one to demonstrate, but here's a picture. Any type of device that has multiple channels, even the Elk 100 siren driver, any siren driver, any siren, like the uh, Ademco 747, for instance, it's got three inputs. It's got a uh, negative, and I think red is warble, and yellow is the steady. And then you could basically hook it up in the exact same fashion. So that about wraps it up for this video. In the future, I plan to do a video where I hook this up to my actual panel and have something like an MPI-11 in place of the 747 I have up there right now. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe uh, and hit the little bell if you want. Uh, I don't know how YouTube's algorithm works. Uh, believe me, it's, 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 it's all Greek to me. It's a mystery. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.